Hey. Hey. Hi. 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 <laughs> um, Soren. <laughs> hey, Soren. Hey. hey. Someone take a sweater from the gift shop. Those are free, right? No. Nancy. Oops. You might want to look into that then. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Neck thing. He looks yeah. around as if Nancy, like, and he's like, someone just took something. He's like, where did they go? Runs off to go find them. I'm like the only person in town. <laughs> it's a one woman town. He'll be back soon. He'll be back soon. He can probably hear me. Uh, um, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Better look for more information first. Well then, Nancy, I want to I have no idea post. why I chased Soren away <laughs> with a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Better look for more information first. <laughs> He's coming back soon. Nancy, run! <laughs> oh no! This looks familiar. Wow. That's right. I saw the other glove near the caves. Wow. He maybe likes collecting gloves. <laughs> Create volcanic oh. winter. All two gloves. Create volcanic winter. Hmm. Oh my goodness! Mention <laughs> volcanic winter. Do these elements link up to that somehow? Do they? No. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, I can't put no. it there. They're color coded. They're color coded. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, volcanic winter. Rocks. <laughs> um Well Well <laughs> I think you put you can't put earth and air next to each other. That makes the desert. So if you put like other ooh Oh Glacier. Ah. We need glacier. Ah, oh, wow. Soren, don't mind me. I'm just learning. <laughs> Ooh. You got eruption. Eruption. Yes. It hey. Wow, I'm smart. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um Why, Elizabeth? Gregor, you have um some competition. <laughs> You um, have a rival. You have a rival. Um. <laughs> Other than the France part <laughs> one to five. Archived email France part one to Pierre Jardine from Soren Bergerson. <laughs> All right, Dr. Jardine. Let me make sure I understand the timeline correctly. In 1782, King Louis XVI yes. of France appoints a new finance comptroller. Monsieur Henri Lefebvre de Ormesson. <laughs> yes. De Ormesson receives his position in the middle of a deep financial crisis. A long war with a certain feisty country calling itself the United States <laughs> has bankrupt France's war coffers. De Ormesson needs gold, and he needs it post haste. One year later, the Herlikide crashes on Skibroth's shores. This much I know. But you seem to be implying there might be a link between the two. What do you know? <laughs> to Soren. I believe it's possible to fill in the gaps, Mr. Bergerson. Let us propose, for argument's sake, you're a French finance comptroller with a sudden desperate need for gold. How would you go about finding it? How would I go about finding it? To Pierre. I'd drain every money source <laughs> I had. Wow. Okay. Everything. Long lost foreign accounts, colonies. But those were surely drained already, given France had been short for short of bankrupt for years. Wait a minute. <laughs> One of King Louis the Sixteenth's predecessors, King Louis the Fourteenth. Wow. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> was one of France's wealthiest rulers. The Sun King, they called him. Do. Dot dot dot. You think he might have had something stashed? A final war chest of sorts buried somewhere for emergencies alone? Perhaps that's what Ormiston discovered, hidden halfway around the world. And then suppose you're trying to move a fortune across the Atlantic and Pacific seas, across foreign waters, even perhaps American waters, without your enemies tearing you apart. You'd want to look as neutral as possible, a sheep raft in wolf's hide. Hmm. Why is it that? That's not how you write an email! <laughs> like... <laughs> He's 
an academic. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> to Soren. The Dutch East India Company was the most prolific trading company in the world. Its ships were trusted everywhere, known in every port. A smart ruler would strike a deal. A hasty payment under the table in exchange for a single company ship to carry a massive fortune around the world. What did you say your local ship's name was again? The Herlikide? The reason it never arrived in Paris, of course, is still unsolved. But I have no insight on that matter. Great. <laughs> Thank to you. Pierre. Dr. Chardin. The implications of this are staggering. <laughs> History is truly amazing. Wow. Same, buddy. That money <laughs> never made it to France, and Ormiston was forced to propose an unpopular tax code to raise funding. The tax code led to public unrest, which led to the storming of the Bastille. The French Revolution. <gasps> King Louis the Sixteenth. Marie Antoinette, <gasps> thousands lost their heads in that madness, all because of the gold. The gold! <laughs> <laughs> One ship goes missing, and a country tears itself apart. I can't believe it. But can you? I just said I can't. But I don't believe you. Well, then, <laughs> that's why we stopped emailing. <laughs> <laughs> the day the Herlikide sank, France sank too. Drama. That's not what... No, it's not in the water. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's wildly incorrect. <laughs> Only one question remains. What was it doing in Iceland? Hmm. Okay, so. Now unarchived emails. <laughs> what if Sorge walks in? Leaving Harvard. <laughs> Yesterday, I received final notice from Professor Wickenham. The faculty has opted not to pursue your proposal for the Newfoundland project. I never thought a single sentence could cut me so deeply. Oof. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's tough, buddy. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> I went to my former advisor and told him I'd petition it, send an updated proposal, anything. But he just laid a hand on my shoulder. <laughs> just now. <laughs> in the end, it comes down to funding, he told me. It always does in our world, doesn't it? The budget just won't stretch, especially not for a proposal of this size. I couldn't believe it. To let archaeological questions of this magnitude simply lie unanswered. I felt ill. I still do. <laughs> I am <laughs> ill. <laughs> I still strongly believe in the project's potential. I know there's something still hidden in the Americas, something amazing. Certain sagas reference landing points on the continent. Wickenham and I, we all but proved it, for goodness sake. Just put a couple of pickaxes in our hands and let us work. But again, dot dot dot. It all comes down to funding, money, prestige, not knowledge. That's all that matters to these people. I packed my things this morning and told my landlord I was leaving. Even going home to Skibrat is better than staying in the States right now. Just setting foot on campus fills me with such a deep anger. They've all but given up. Me? I don't give up. Ad astra per aspera. To the stars, even through hardship. Wow! And if it's money they need, well, I'll find a way to make it happen. Au revoir, Harvard. You haven't seen the last of me. Home, maybe. 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 I've arrived. Nothing has changed <laughs> in the years I've been gone. It's peculiar, and in some ways it's as though I have come back not as a grown man, but as the boy I used to be. I've set up my tools and my various processes. I believe there may be some artifacts of interest in the nearby hills. That mm. uneasy feeling. <laughs> Tonight I went to the Misty Skip for the first time since my arrival. When I walked in, everyone fell silent and turned to watch me. Oh. <laughs> I had the strange feeling they'd all been talking about me, and not in a nice way. I've taken up my old job at the culture center for now, but even then, no one comes to speak to me. That's sad. They don't want to be cultured. <laughs> the Arger of Skibrot. No one returns my hellos when I'm in town. Only Elizabeth ever smiles and offers me a drink when I go to the skip. It reminds me of the old Arger of the sagas. Accursed men. Weak men. It doesn't matter. I'm not here for the company. Found a beautiful new axe today in the caverns. <laughs> that made me feel a bit better. In the caverns? Soren! <laughs> ominous. <laughs> I just found it. It was just there. <laughs> so I took it. It's mine now, and it's beautiful. <laughs> Ship notes. Five gears crank the wall of empty wood. Behold the curls in the proud lion's mane facing upwards towards the sky. Found this etched on the hull before it was painted over. Why skywards? Does it refer to the lion on the ship's bow? Perhaps. Perhaps. Mounting pressure. It's getting harder and harder to work with Elizabeth. I took this job because I thought it'd be an easy way to make some friends. Ha! The first month I asked for invoices and I got a blank stare. Turns out Elizabeth only keeps financial records for the pub. 
burp, what of expenses and credits for the festival? I asked. Surprise, surprise, the answer to that was no clue. Upon further inspection, I discovered the accounts were deeply in the red, to the tune of 2.5 million kroner. Wow. The festival's been hemorrhaging money for the last two years running, coincidentally. Ever since Magnus's sanity took a dive over the nearest waterfall. Is it equally coincidental that the two are dating? I think not. Needless to say, I had to take Elizabeth off finances completely. <laughs> Why, Elizabeth? <laughs> <laughs> My workload has doubled. I rarely leave the headquarters now. I feel positively horrible about demoting Elizabeth, but she's not in the right mindset to be handling the amount of Kroner right now. All of her focus is on the ship and on Magnus. It angers me that he absorbs so much of her time. It's clear the town utterly depends on her, and here she is fawning over that... That dolt! <laughs> but it can't be helped. I'll have to work around it. I'll manage. I always do. <laughs> Winter guest records. January. Tourist bus. 21 visitors. Festival traffic. 391 visitors. One non-associated visitor. Nancy Drew. Oh. December. School tour from Reykjavik. 30 visitors. November. One visitor. Alicia DeSoto. In town to visit Dagny. Purchased a gift for her. Gift shop sales quota for the month achieved. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Achieved. October. One visitor. Sunny June. Mm -hmm. Hired for seasonal temp work. Fired within five days. Ha. He asked for two weeks notice and continued working. Necessitated an explanation that two weeks notice is only valid if you're leaving, not being fired. <laughs> Found one Viking-themed teddy bear missing from the, te from the bear shelf after his final day. Reported to authorities. Authorities seem disturbingly unconcerned about Bertha. <laughs> As they are in Iceland, apparently. 